this is a you know one of a student little child uh, my student uh, observed uh, for behavior management purpose and this child uh, let's say he's a john seven years old male and in first grade and his daddy is not around so he has a little bit of anxiety about his dad and then he has uh, ADHD and then other you know any other disabilities is not known yet and he's on most of testings so mostly he has uh, the teacher probably have a difficult time with him and he's very competitive short tempered cynical dependent and then negative and pessimistic and very aggressive and stubborn and needy. And it's my student you know, writing. And he does not have any other services yet, but occupational therapy helps him to do his assignment and work. And he has uh, five behaviors, uh, you know, prominent behaviors. So one is uh, shouting out in the middle of a semester, you know, class, uh, and then throwing things uh, and breaking things. Uh, so throwing and breaking and right on the desk uh, when he got bored. And then he hits himself, so self harm behaviors. So he has, uh, you know, these uh, five behaviors, uh, and then the behavior, you know, the first one I taught, you know, taught my students uh, to do shaping. So it's like a mildest behavior first, uh, and then just uh, lay out those five behaviors uh, by the length. Uh, and she said, uh, you know, shouting out, it is just, you know, John feels the need, he shouts out, answers uh, at inappropriate times, uh, or will call for the teacher in the middle of uh, the teacher's uh, teaching. So he wants to get her attention at times uh, when she is giving attention to other students and will use his voice uh, to get her attention. So <laughs> for this, uh, and my students' uh, um, behavior shaping plan, she said, uh, when Adam has a question, give him this objective to raise both the hands uh, with all 10 fingers up. And, Adam, and John will use his fingers and count them all the way down from 10 to one. If he did that, however, the teacher does not give him any attention. And then he counts it again. And this could be taught to other students in the class as a way to practice and they are first graders. Uh, so all their students uh, just, you know, they have uh, something to say impulsively. However, don't do it. And then you just hold your fingers uh, and then you count uh, to yourself. Uh, and then teacher will see your fingers and then teacher will respond. Uh, however, teacher is too busy and doesn't respond. And then you just uh, count back again. So that was, uh, you know, what my student said. So what do you think about it? Is that behavior shaping behavior or it's just like, you know, child is very impulsive and child is, you know, my student knows a child does uh, those uh, shout out, blood out uh, to get teacher's attention. However, she said uh, there is no teaching. She said uh, she's going to tell the student, the little child, uh, to hold up hands uh, and then count to 10. So, you know, very impressive ADHD child, uh, and they expect. Uh, however, how he can be patient and control himself, uh, and then he can do it, and she didn't say about it. So this is mostly what 
our teachers may think they don't know what to do with the, those blood outs and just, you know, uh, shout out the answers. And basically, as I said, uh, the teacher, you know, this child, uh, and especially his dad is not around. Uh, and then it looks like, you know, throughout, the, you know, what, you know, she wrote, uh, this child uh, has pretty difficult emotional difficulties, uh, right? That's why probably because of this behavior, you know, the school tried to evaluate the child so they can put him in the special education and get some specialized magic help. However, it's, uh, you know, meanwhile, you know, they have to just get through with him. The number one my student didn't know is this child's behavior, this shouting out of behavior could be unconscious, not intentionally. He wants to just disrupt, interrupt the teacher's teaching. It is just without even his recognition, he just shout already out. And then he realized what he said when teacher, you know, gave the child a reactive, uh, aversive uh, reactions. And then the you know, child may just realize what he did. So it's very difficult uh, for the young children. And then this is a typical young children's behaviors, right? In the classroom, most teachers observe uh, just shouting out, blood out, and the unnecessary comments out loud and uninvited comments they do, or they even just like without you know, knowing, they just talk about, you know, whatever cartoon stories and nobody knows. It's just uh, that's, uh, you know, most of these behaviors and then teachers believe it's attention seeking behaviors. It could be attention seeking behaviors, especially when they do not have, uh, you know, good affection from the adults in home culture. And then they could have this, especially just, you know, it goes with the children's temperament a lot. And usually students could be quiet and withdraw and shy and then just try to be invisible. However, those students temperament just like they can't stand. And then they just, uh, it doesn't matter, you know, it's a you know, good behavior. <laughs> not good, great behavior. It's not intention, but they just do it. It just became habits like a habitual. So they do this. So number one, the teacher, you know, what they want, as they said, is just attention, right? Teacher's attention. So what do they do? If this child background is without dad, or just, you know, if they don't have a dad, and then probably mom is busy with just work to feed their kids, and or it's not always like attentive parents around. So it could be right, right? So as a classroom teacher, what do you do? You just collect those. It's not that many children. It's just like a few children. They just, you collect them in a just corner of a front area. Usually the teacher is around and they, you sit them there. And then when teacher just do verbal teaching and it, the teacher see a whole classroom, right, left and right, and everyone's eyes, they look and while they're explaining, try to, you know, see, you know, they are following their explanation. And then look at those children, those a few or just two, three children or one child, look at their eyes while they're explaining. And then their bodies, the proximity control, their bodies beside them. And then just like they can do just like a head or just a shoulder or just bed, pad while explaining make them tense because the teacher is around, right? So that means I am with you. I am around you. I am watching you, right? That's your attention. Still teacher can teach. It doesn't matter if the teacher teaches in the front or back or walk around, around these children. Even though just they teach in the front, still they frequently look at these children while explaining, make eye contact with them.
Okay. And then they see the trigger signs and then they walk to them and then they pet there and physically they touch them. Why? Because her mouth is busy with explain, explaining, you know, lesson content. So they go and then touch them and then just always make them feel with, I'm with you. Okay, that kind of feeling. And then especially the child like John, I rather have him after school and then talk with the parents. Just we have to see the situation about the, how they go home after dismissal. If they walk home, and then, you know, all parents are available to pick them up and they could have a time, just have a spend the time with the child. Just, you know, have him behind and they will love it. He will love it. And then just ask, John, can you help me today after school? And then he will say yes, right? And then just leave him. And then she walks and give him work. It's not just academic work, but you know, you prepare something and then just ask him to glue something or color something, cut something, or arrange something. Just give him some work, or let him just help. Or don't say anything else. Just let him help. And then, oh, thank you. You helped me a lot. I love it. And then, can you help me tomorrow again? And then let him go. And then tomorrow you have the child about 10 to 20 minutes uh, and similar. And then John close, you know, gradually feel close with the teacher, right? He's uh, something special. The teacher asked him to, you know, wait and then just help her. And then third day, so it's a time flows and then teacher just uh, ask him about uh, those, you know, shouting out behavior, throwing behavior. He has those, you know, behaviors. Uh, and she just uh, talk about in the beginning or meanwhile, uh, teacher can tape his behavior. These days we have a cell phones, right? So, you know, we could talk with the parents, but if you just talk with the child and then you wanna delete, and then I don't believe it's a really big matter because most of the parents sign about those videotapes. So it's not commercially used or just uh, you just expose it to public. And you just uh, tape the child uh, and then about, you know, several days, you already have a close relationship with a child, right? And then you start sit down and John, I, to be honest, I have some, you know, problems because when I teach in the middle of the time, you talk and you shout and you comment and it's really like a make me stop talking. And then do you want to see what you're doing? And then you just sit down and show that that clear and then John sees himself there it's like models and then John is going to see his you know what he does so so tell I just you know take this so you see and what do you think and then it's not formal conference but a little talk it's like a casual talk and he may just shrug and then do you have that much you know to talk and then or you think you can wait and then I, you know, you can talk to me after school like this. So, and then he probably say, I can wait. So do you want to do some, you know, work? So I know, you know, it's really hard to um, stop. However, we can, you know, slowly we can stop. So I, I can continue to take you and then we can watch together. And then let's just see if you can, you know, talk out just one last time. So right now we count you and it looks like you did about eight times. So, so can you do about seven times next time? And it will be really great. Just one less. And then he said, okay. And then you tape it. And then you count together. And then he really made the seven times. Wow, that is great. I know how difficult you, you know, tried. And then teacher could give us just a little goodies, a small, that big one, you know, sneakers or something. This is a really good, John. I'm so proud of you. And then give it to the, you know, John. And then... Just keep doing and in the beginning, almost every day you do it. And then gradually you just do two to three days and then once a week and then once a month. And then those are just only 
shout out, blood out, even though he has five behaviors. So almost this shout out, this sees the, and then you can start the, you know, next behavior. Okay, so next the behavior, and then just remember when you observe the child and then see the child behaviors, uh, and then where this behavior comes, it's not just like a clear reasons and the functions. I know, you know, we know all children's behavior is for the communication tools, so we know that. However, many times uh, you see the one child behavior patterns, you could see this child is a very lonely child. This child is very upset against, the, uh, you know, adults and all kinds of reasons. So, so pretty much with their background or most of our behaviors because they are academically very delayed. And then, you know, what do you do if you are you know, have a delayed academic skills? So you cannot do much, right? And then pretty much you are staying you know, on an island in you know, that small classroom because everybody's a very busy, but yourself is very just like a delayed, could not understand. However, children cannot stand still. They gotta do something. If they are not attentive to the teacher's instructions, and then they gotta move around and they just cannot stand the boredom. So most of the behaviors have those patterns. So as a teacher, you see the child pattern of behaviors, and then you have to understand that. So John, here is like a, this blood out kind of behaviors. And then he has a throwing behaviors. He has a breaking behaviors. He has a scribbling behaviors. So pretty much you can tell right away the child is not on the instructional level because the child is not participating in teacher's teaching, right? And then child not participate. It's not because child just say like, you know, okay, I'm gonna be a bad boy. It's not that. Every child wanna do what adults like to do. However, if they are academically behind and then they cannot do it, especially this is a second semester. So it's like, you know, they did a March, that means First graders uh, around the March, pretty much it's all about the early literacy, right? And then child may have uh, some receptive language issues and all kinds of different issues the child could not follow. So we gotta do some deficiency screening for these reasons, okay? So I just talked about this uh, shouting behavior. So in the first, uh, the teacher always make sure and look at those children's eyes when they do whole class teaching because it's a general education classroom. I know teachers are all looking. However, when they do a whole class looking while explaining, describing about those lesson content, especially make a clear eye contact with those children and then make them feel always the teacher watch me. My teacher is watching me. And then next thing, you know, physically, you just go around them and then just tap, you know, pet them. And then they know teacher really physically with me. And then those kind of, you know, after school or before you know, school and then talk, to, talk with the parents and have a, just every day about 10 to 15 minutes uh, time with the child in the beginning, it looks like it's just casual time and the child really believes that my teacher just so needs my help. And then eventually, once you have some close social emotional relationship, and then gradually talk about the child concerning behaviors. And then, you know, video taping is really good because many children, they do not see their own behaviors. So that when they see, they could be really surprised, right? And then as an educational partner, you and I, instead of just, you gotta do this, I'm here, it's not that. Always a teacher just be with the child, like in the act, like in a school mom and school dad. So always encourage a child, it's not to criticize. I really want you to succeed. So always with the child and make the children feel like my teacher is my side. And then we work together. So when you tape it and watch and, you know, 
tally mark how many times they did. And then sometimes funny scene is, it is really funny, John, you said that this, uh, it's just the wrong time. However, I really like your joke. You know, could be like that, right? So once, you know, a child feels very close with a teacher, socially, emotionally, and then even though their home life is like without daddy and they could be lonely, however, they don't feel lonely at school because even though they don't have friends around, the still teacher is always look at them and they know teacher is always attentive. And then they are very interested in me and they want me to succeed. And then they will follow that teacher. Okay, so this is the one little behavior I just revealed uh, using my student's work. Okay. <laughs>